Hey church, it's Pastor Matt here from East Richland Friends Church, and welcome to another episode of Basic Beliefs. In today's episode, we're going to be asking ourselves the question, what is the church? Before we answer and get into the discussion, let's go to our Lord in a word of prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for your church, Lord. Help us to fully understand it, Lord. Father, we, we thank you for pulling us together and gathering us out of this world and bringing us together in, in this bond of family that we have that is called uh, the church, Lord. Uh, Father, I just pray that you would teach us, guide us today, and still in our hearts and our minds your word, Lord, that we might live more like you. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So let's look at that question. What is the church? Now, as we get started, let me go ahead and read our statement of faith that comes directly from our church's uh, faith and practice. And this is what our doctrine says about the church. We believe that the church is made up of all those from the apostles until now, both the triumphant dead and the living, who through response to God's gracious offer of salvation by repentance of their sins and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, have been born again as new creatures in Christ. This church is spiritual in nature, universal in scope, holy in character, and redemptive in its life and purpose. Its purposes are to make disciples of all nations by its witness to the grace and love of God and to live as a loving fellowship which builds up one another in the grace and knowledge of God. The church accomplishes these purposes by its existence as particular local congregations gathered out of the world and as associations of congregations in larger organizations under the leadership and service of those called and gifted to, to such service. It worships in prayer, thanksgiving and song, diligently studies the word of God, witnesses to and proclaims the gospel of God's Son, exercises the gifts of the Spirit, administers discipline, and performs works of blessing and service, both physical and spiritual, to its members and to all in need. Now, I know there were a ton of statements in there, and honestly, this week, uh, I'm not going to go through each and every one of those statements individually. There's just too much packed in there. But I wanted you to hear that to kind of fully understand the, the whole picture of what the church is. Uh, but in today's episode, I'm going to kind of condense that down and look a little more specifically at how we answer kind of the question, what is the church? Now, when you hear the word church, you might typically think of a building, or even a denomination, uh, you might think of a place, or you might think of the people. And so for a lot of us, that word church can kind of mean many things. And if you don't really think about it or study on it or, or uh, pray over it, sometimes you can kind of lose some of that meaning. All of the definitions and thoughts and ways that people use the word church begins to be what we think about when we hear the word church. And so a couple of things that I, that I just want to talk about and bring up is that the church is not a building. Now, I mentioned in that statement of faith that talks about organizing in groups, but the church is not a building, at least not in the biblical sense of church. The building is merely a place where the people gather. The building is merely a place where the people gather. And, and additionally into that, when we think of denominations, we are a friend's church. There are Methodist churches and Baptist churches and Catholic churches, uh, so on and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different denomination and, and denominations and groups. The church as well isn't an organization in the sense of kind of a, a legal organization or a church denomination, but it's merely an organization about the people. There's a, there's a phrase that I use all of the time in ministry, and that's that people are the most important thing. People are the most important thing. And, and when Jesus said, you know, gave us the two greatest commandments, he says the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself, right? So Jesus puts God first, God the Father first, and puts others first 
right, is our second main commandment from God to love others. People are the most important thing, and the church is a gathering of people. Now, in the scriptures, uh, the term that is used for church, especially in the New Testament, so the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Uh, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. Now, ecclesia comes from two Greek words, ek, which means out of or out from, and two, and kaleo, which means to call. And so the term used for church was really those that were gathered out from the population with a calling, specifically a calling to God. So all those who have come out of the world, out of our communities, and are gathering together because they've been called by God. Now that term was used um, even in the in the Greco-Roman culture. Um, they would use that term ecclesia uh, to refer to like government meetings. People would come out of and gather together to make decisions about their community. And so the same is true of the church: is that people who are following Christ, who are disciples of His, who have changed their lives to follow Him, gather out of society to come. Together. They are called together. And so the scriptures talk about this church and these gatherings both as local and as universal. So the scripture talks about the church as being both local and universal. And so that word ecclesia is used by Paul on several occasions. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, when Paul refers to the local church, he uses that same term. So the local gathering that is taking place uh, in Corinth, or the local gathering of church members uh, that takes place in Thessalonica. Um, the church is a local body, those in a local community who have accepted Christ and are coming together. But the scripture also uses that word church in a universal sense. For instance, in 1 Corinthians 10, 32, uh, Paul refers to the church of God, the ecclesia of God, those that are called out from or who come out from uh, society and are called to God, God's church. And so um, what is the church? Let me say this, two things. The church is both local communities of Jesus followers as well as all Jesus followers, as well as all Jesus followers who have ever lived, not just those that are living now, but who have ever lived. And so those two things, that the church is both a gathering of local people as well as all of the people who follow Christ in the world, uh, kind of emphasizes the point that the church is the people. And that is the, the kind of the scriptural definition of it. The focus, once again, is not on denominations. It's not on a building or the place where people gather, but it is the statement that the church is the people. Now, one of the things that I want to emphasize too, when we ask that question, what is the church? Is like, what is its nature? What are the church's purposes? And so to add on to that, the first thing that I want to say is that the church is spiritual in nature. So the church is not a bond of, of people who just have common beliefs or just have common traditions or have common uh, hobbies or are linked together by other things. The church is meant to be a group of people who have one common bond, and that is Jesus Christ. That is the worship of God. And so that is the one thing that bonds people together. And in fact, the scriptures make a lot of proclamations on that, that there is no separation between men and women. There's no separation between Jews and Gentiles or Jews and Greeks. There's no separation between the educated and the uneducated. Like everybody is together in this church body. Um, the church body is, is not about any other commonality other than Jesus Christ. And so the church in itself is spiritual in nature. Uh, in John chapter 4, in verses 23 to 26, the Apostle John writes this, The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers 
will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Now the woman who he was talking to said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. He who is called the Christ, and when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, said to her, I who speak to you am he. And so Jesus in this uh, passage here not only proclaims himself the Son of God, the Messiah, but he also talks about that worship, that as we gather, as we worship, as we grow, as we come together with the commonality that we are God's children, we worship uh, in spirit, that we have a spiritual bond and link that brings us together. And that is kind of the emphasis of what the church is. It is a body of people, a group, a gathering of people who have a connection spiritually, who have a connection spiritually. Now, um, 1 Peter in chapter 2, and looking at uh, verses 4 and 5, the Apostle Peter writes this. As you come to him, that is Jesus, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God is chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So there you see the Apostle Peter talking about in reference to our link to Jesus, that we are both a spiritual household, right? A spiritual home. This is a gathering where our link is spiritual, spiritual in prayer, spiritual in the change that happens inside of us, right? But also that we give spiritual sacrifices to God. So what does that mean? That means that as we're being molded into his character, right, we become a priesthood. Our lives become about sharing who Jesus is, about the gifts that he is giving us, about evangelizing and telling others about Jesus that we might change our lives. So the spiritual nature is one that's built on love and kindness and forgiveness and mercy. Those are all spiritual acts that we live out in our lives, both in the church and outside of the church. And so this place, the place that we gather, the people when they gather, gather in a spirit, particularly the spirit of Christ and the Holy Spirit who we talked about um, a few weeks ago. And so the church is spiritual. So that's the second thing. So number one, the church is the people, both local and universal. And the church, the people gather together in spirit and worship in spirit. So there's no other required common bond for the church to be the church. All right, the next thing that I um, want to go through um, is kind of the emphasis on, you know, what, uh, I guess, the emphasis with the key truths of the church. So we read that passage to worship in spirit and in truth. And I just love this passage in Matthew chapter 16. Um, Jesus is um, talking with his disciples and uh, particularly Peter speaks up. And so in Matthew chapter 16, and, and I'm going to start in verse 13 and read through verse 18. This is the conversations that happens with Jesus and his disciples. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Or who do people basically say that I am, that Jesus is? And the disciples respond. They said, some say you're John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He, Jesus, said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the first thing there is to reemphasize our point that the church is spiritual. The church is a group of people who are spiritual, and Jesus says that, that it's not flesh and blood. It's not Peter's own human understanding or knowledge that has shown him that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, but it is the Spirit. It is God in heaven who has shown this to Peter. The other thing is the truth that Peter reveals. So Peter replies to Jesus and says, right, um, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Peter proclaims, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the chosen one, the one who is anointed to save the world. He says, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus' reply to Peter is, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. And so the foundation of the church is that Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus is the one sent to save us, to save mankind from our sins and from death. Remember, Jesus is the one who rose from the grave on the third day and ascended into heaven. And he proclaimed that we would follow him, that he was going ahead to prepare a place. So he was a human, he died as a human, he rose in a human body, and he ascended into heaven. And we will follow him. And so Jesus is the Christ, the one chosen to lead us into eternal life. And, and Jesus tells Peter that on this foundation, on this rock, I will build my church. So the church's foundation is in Jesus Christ. The emphasis of the church's foundation and the truth of the church's foundation is that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, I just want to emphasize this first. I love this passage here. Um, there's kind of an interesting play on Peter's name in this passage. And so Peter's name in Greek was Petros, which means rock. So Peter's name it literally means the rock. And when, when Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church, that's the word Petra, which is a different form of the word rock. And Petra means a large rock, a boulder, a cliff, a giant stone, right? And so Peter is kind of known as a, a small rock. You know, you would use that term Petros even for just a rock you would pick up off the ground, but Petra does not mean that. Petra means the big church. And so in a sense... When, when Peter proclaims this truth and Jesus calls him Peter or Petros rock, he says, and you, the rock, the smaller rock, this truth is the truth that I will build my big rock, my big foundation that is the church. Um, and so it's just a really neat emphasis that um, this foundation, this rock, that Peter's proclamation of truth is actually going to build the bigger foundation, that is Jesus' emphasis on the church. And so those are three things there. So number one, the church is the people, not the place or the denomination or the building. Um, secondly, that the church is spiritual in nature. We have a bond together that when we follow Christ, we are born again. We are made new creations, that we are holy, we are spiritual because God is spiritual. And in that bond, we are drawn together. And number three, that the church is built on the truth that Jesus is the Christ and the Messiah. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about when we say what is the church um, kind of covers, you know, the purposes of the church. I could dig through a million different passages and, and scripture verses, but the one that I want to focus on is, is found in Ephesians um, chapter four. So um, if you do have a Bible and you want to flip there, Ephesians chapter four. And in Ephesians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul is kind of describing um, Jesus' emphasis to the church. And starting in verse 11, he says, And he, which is Jesus, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. Now, 
Notice how he said the truth of the Son of God. The church is based on Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, right? Until we all attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, or by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped." When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now, Paul goes on to continue in, in verses 17 to 31, talking about putting on our new self, that we're created in the likeness of God and, and righteousness, and we, we put off the old sins of our lives, and, and we move forward in ministry. And so there are two things that I want to point out uh, about the church and the purposes of the church. The first is that we build each other up. So once again, the church is the group of people bonded together by, by spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and emphasizing um, that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. And what we do is we build each other up. Now, Paul specifically mentions apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. And he first talks about equipping those, but he talks about growing up in manhood, that we all attain unity and truth and understanding in Christ. And so part of the, the work of the church is to continue to speak truth into each other, to help us to all to fully understand who Jesus is and what he means for our lives. But the second then is in training. The evangelist teaches the rest of the church how to evangelize and share the message of Jesus. The teacher shows the, the other members or the body of, of Christ how you might teach others about him and how to um, live in his image and what work we are called to do. And the shepherds help to care for the church, but also teach others how to care for those that are in need. And so the church really does two things. It helps those that are in the church. Remember, the church is made up of the body of those who follow Jesus Christ, who proclaim him as the Messiah. So it helps those people who are following Jesus and proclaim him as the Christ to a fuller understanding and to, to go out and work in his ministry, the ministry of caring for others, the ministry of teaching others and sharing the message of Christ with others. So it helps to build up those in the church but also emphasizes reaching out to those outside the church to both care for their spiritual needs and their physical needs. So there's kind of two ways of building up here, building up those who are already following Christ and doing ministry and serving those in the church, but also those on the outside. And so we are called to equip and build up um, those in and to serve those outside of the church. And those are the main emphases. So if I could kind of break that back down into, into five parts and answer that question, what is the church? Number one, the church is people, not a building, not a place, not a denomination. Number two, the church is spiritual. God is spirit and we are bonded together in the Holy Spirit with each other and not any other commonality. Um, number three is that um, the church is founded on the truth that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God. Number four, that the church builds up as members. All those who are following Christ are built up in a more understanding and understanding of the truth and knowledge of God. And number five, that as the church is equipped, we are serving and loving and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the rest of the world. And so those are going to be the five main points. And that doesn't encompass everything. I read that huge long statement at the beginning. That doesn't encompass everything. But I want to emphasize those five points. When you answer the question, what is the church? Those things are its emphasis.
Well, I hope you gained some knowledge and I hope you were encouraged to be a part of this church. And if you're not a part of this church, I want you to know those those five things. I always encourage you to email me personally, message us on Facebook, or even call the church office if you'd like to reach out, if you have questions that you'd like answered, uh, or if you just have questions about becoming a member or joining the church or questions about how Jesus saves. Please uh, contact us, and I'll see you next week in another episode of Basic Beliefs. Bye, everybody. <laughs>